Hey guys, today I'm trying something completely different. It kind of sounds like Monty Python, doesn't it? Okay, no, I'm, I'm just trying something different today. And for a long time I have been wanting to expand my strawberry garden. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a, a brick gr strawberry garden. And it's going to be fairly large though, and so I'm looking at probably, probably 100 plants or so. And when I was doing this, I thought, you know, I could go out and I could buy these plants. But then that doesn't hold with the, with the tradition or the, really the uh, purpose of my channel would be to grow your own vegetables and, you know, save your own seeds and regrow again. And so I got to thinking about this and I got thinking about strawberries. And I went out and I started looking around about, you know, how to collect strawberry seeds and stuff. And I know that many or most strawberries today are, are probably some strain of hybrid and you can't really save the seed and grow true. But... That doesn't stop me. I mean, that doesn't stop any of us, right? That's what we're all doing. It's all a learning process, right? So what I decided to do is I decided to uh, grab some strawberries and save my own seeds. Now, one thing that, that everybody, almost everybody says is that you take the strawberry and, no, well, actually, some of them just say just pull the seeds out, you know, from the side. But some of them said you run it through a blender and then, you, you know, with a little bit of water, and then you take a, like a sieve like this, and so you put it in a blender and... You know, you, 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 you grind it up with like, for, for every two or three strawberries, you put in like a cup or two of water. And then you grind it up for a minute, and then you pour it into this sieve, and then you kind of push all the, you know, all the flesh through, and it leaves the seeds. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you've ever seen strawberry seeds, but okay, I tried that, and that was the, the biggest failure I've ever had. Because the seeds go right straight through this. So I went down to the store. And I tried to find the smallest mesh that I could find. And this one here is so small, with my, with my eyes, I mean, it doesn't look like you could put a, a, you know, a piece of pollen through this thing. But I did this, and then when I pushed it all through, everything went through. The seeds all went out and everything. So I don't know what people are talking about when they say use these, so I'm not going to use those. I do know that what you have to do is you have to take a strawberry that is that is completely ripe, a little, actually a little bit overripe, and you'll see it starts to, you know, kind of like bunching up because it's just getting really soft. And so then, now what I what I ended up doing was I ended up taking a sharp knife and then just popping. I know it's painstaking, popping every little seed that I could out of these strawberries, and I ended up with you know with a few hundred strawberries, which worked out really well. So if anybody has done it by extracting these strawberry seeds through a blender and a sieve. I'd love to see you do it. I'd love to know how you do this because that just does not work. I, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I, I, okay. So anyways, so that's what I've done. And then what I did was I took the, the seeds and then I put them in the freezer because you have to stratify them. It has to go through a cold process. So I put them in the freezer. They've been in the freezer for two months now. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant them. And we'll see what kind of results we get. Now these are just regular red strawberries that I got from the grocery store and they look kind of past their prime and I picked the the whole you know little box up for like 99 cents because probably half the strawberries were inedible but that was okay that was okay by me because I was just gonna save a lot of the seeds anyway so I took the ones that were inedible and saved the seeds from those so alright so I'm gonna go ahead and plant these seeds and we'll see what we get okay so here's the container I've chosen to use now I know that a lot of people go out and they buy these fancy little cell packs you know that you have the individual cells and you has a little dome that you put on it and whatnot but you know what I mean I think that we can save our money and not really have to spend hardly anything I, there's so much stuff laying around the house this here was just from a potluck we went to and I went and saved the uh, it had croissants in it and I, I saved this and you know whenever you go to places like that or or you go to people's houses and stuff and they're gonna throw these things away have them save them because this here right here is a little mini greenhouse it's got a lid built right in and you know you can put a few holes in here for ventilation and, and this is there's absolutely nothing wrong with these so um, I, I encourage you to you know be creative and you know uh, find stuff that you can recycle instead of just pitching it so this is what I've chosen to use now my mix I'm using I'm using one half coconut coir you could use peat moss but I, I like the cocoa coir and the other half is organic potting soil and um, I'm gonna I pre-soak this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and poke a few holes in here and just I'm not gonna worry about 
how far apart the holes are because these things are not going to stay in here very long at all and I'm just going to barely put them in I mean I'm just I'm I'm barely going to bury these seeds because these seeds like I say are so small that I mean there's there's no sense of doing this so I'm going to grab my tweezers and drop them in okay so I went and got a pair of tweezers and I started first off to try to pick up a couple of the seeds and I realized that the, these these aren't tweezers what, what are these can I explain what these are can you see the tips on those I don't know if the camera is is focusing on it but look at that they're pointed I don't know what these are but I better get them back into my wife's manicuring case then I found these these are real tweezers so this is what it's going to take to pick up these seeds so I'm just going to go ahead and move this over here and try to pick up these seeds and oh yeah that's much better and I don't even know how big these seedlings get before they start putting out their second set of leaves but I'm assuming that uh, that you know uh, the consensus seems to be that it takes about two weeks for these to start germinating so you know I'm guessing probably another two or three weeks after that and then we'll probably have a second set of leaves so them I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're only gonna have to be in this container for probably I'm guessing you know a month maybe six weeks but I mean there seems to be conflicting reports some people say that these things take you know eight weeks to three months to germinate. <laughs> I don't know and then then I watched one video where this one this one girl germinated hers in like six days and then uh, another one where there was these commercial growers and they germinated them in a week so I mean you just you don't know I mean and I, I don't know this is an experiment I've never grown strawberries from seed before and you know much less tried to get the seeds from the strawberries so we're gonna give this a try and see how it works out and then after this is all seeded I'm gonna go ahead and give this another soaking now like I say I did pre soak this this material and of course the, the coconut coir it comes in a brick anyway so you have to pre soak it in order to get it to expand and to get it to kind of come apart so it took a lot it took a couple gallons of of water just to for one little you know I don't know how many ounce brick it was just a couple ounces of brick though so okay so then I'm gonna grab my my sprayer and we're gonna soak these down okay so what I'm gonna do is I just take my my little you know this little pump sprayer here and I want to make sure that I've got all these seeds covered I'm just gonna cover them very lightly I'm just you know barely tamping them I'm trying not to get the uh, the soil too compact either but the problem with small seeds like this is that it, when you're using anything that isn't a very fine fine medium uh, it you know one of these seeds could be sitting up against a, a little piece of dirt or a little twig or something like that microscopic and then it never actually gets any water because it just sits up against something and then the water goes right by it. and so that's the problem with with really small seeds now the right way to do this and I, and, and I didn't do it and I should have was to when I used the potting soil or if I was going to use compost or something was to sift it really fine and that's that's where this would come in really handy when you're planting very small seeds you sift your your potting soil well not necessarily your potting soil but when you're using compost to sift it out really good and get it into a fine almost like sand and the smaller you can get the 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 the, the material the, the smaller you can get it close enough to the size of the seed much better it's going to perform so anyways I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and soak this down now I didn't put any um, any holes in the bottom of this container and the reason being is because I I'm only going to keep these in here until they pop up and then show their first set of leaves I'm not worrying about them them uh, you know rotting and and what on in here you know they're not going to get root bound or you know, I'm not going to worry about any kind of soil contaminants because this is pretty good, pretty good potting soil and everything I use. I'm just going to soak it really good. And then I'm going to close the dome, and then I'm going to put this in a very warm location. I'll probably put it in my grow room closest to the uh, closest to the uh, the inside of the room, not the windows, because it's fairly cold outside, and the the 
there's some heat loss through the windows not much but in toward the center of the room it's getting it probably about 75 degrees in there with all the lights and everything close to the windows it's between 65 and 70 so I'm gonna put it in the warmer part of the room I should probably do it I don't know I tend to overthink things sometimes so okay we're gonna give that a try so we're gonna close this up and I'm gonna put a label on it and we'll see how long it takes okay so it's time for an update now I I forgot to mention the date that I planted these strawberries and I planted them on the 4th of February and here it is the 15th of February and these started to come up about two days ago I gave them a couple extra days to see if I was going to get any more come up and it looks like this is about what we got now I'm guessing probably about about a 30 percent germination rate which I'm not I mean I, I'm not gonna cry about that I think that's pretty good I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to show you guys I'm out here in the greenhouse where there's quite a bit of light so I don't know if you can see them but they're really small but they are coming up so when these babies get a little bit bigger and uh, they get their second set of leaves I'm gonna pull these out and put them out in the garden when it's warm enough I'll, I'll keep them in the greenhouse until it's warm enough outside and then probably mid-April I'll put these out in my strawberry bed and we'll give them a go and see what kind of strawberries we get but anyways there it is uh, growing strawberries from seeds that you get from a store-bought strawberry and it's possible there's a living proof so what we get from it I have no clue I mean <laughs> with my luck I'll get a watermelon or something out of it but anyways it's uh, it's doable so there you go thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch y'all later be sure to stop over to GrowYourHeirlooms.com where we have podcasts, gardening Q&A, tips on year-round gardening, survival gardening, and current projects that are going on.